Hi there, it's Harry Kalimnius here from thethoughtgym.com and in today's class we're going to do an Ashtanga bite size class. So elements of Ashtanga practice but don't worry if you've never done it before, um, it's going to be a very super simple, quick Ashtanga bite size class. So let's start in Tadasana. So feet about hip width apart, shoulders relaxed, down the body, eyes starting to close, breath starting to soften. Breathing in through the nose, out through the nose, into the belly, out of the belly. Okay, from there, come into the front of your mat, if you're not already there that is, of course. Feet together, big toes touching, heels slightly apart. From here, inhale the arms up towards the sky. Gaze towards the hands. Exhale as you softly bend the knees, forward fold, keeping the back straight as much as you can until you get to the bottom. Inhale, halfway lift, arms to shins or thighs. Exhale, place the hands on the ground, step right leg back, followed by left leg. Option here to take the knees to the ground first. Keep the elbows stacked over the wrists and then come down on the exhale, keeping the core engaged. Inhale brings you into a baby cobra here, and rolling back, chin tucks to the chest, knees on the floor, hips all the way back, and then tucking the toes, downward facing dog. So this is your inverted V, have a little walk through the feet here. Inhale, exhale as you shoot the tailbone up to the sky behind you, pressure going through the backs of the knuckles here. Inhale, right leg lifts high. Exhale, step it through towards the hands, followed by the left leg. Inhale, halfway lift, flat back. Exhale, fold down, bend the knees, roll up, vertebra by vertebra. Arms come overhead, inhaling up, gaze towards the hands, engage the glutes and the thighs. Exhale, just again, softly bend the knees, roll all the way down. Inhale, halfway lift, hands to shins or thighs. Exhale, hands to the floor, step the left leg back, followed by the right leg. Here, option is to take the one from before, or full chaturanga, so keep the core engaged, knees off the ground, shoulders over the wrist, push forward on the toes, bring the shoulder blades down towards the elbows, inhale, turn over the feet even, as we come up into our upward facing dog. Exhale, roll back, downward facing dog, and again, lifting, the hips up towards the sky, pedaling through the feet, breathing in through the nose, into the ribs, and out. If you want, you can flubber your lips, like so keep your lips together and just go. Good, inhale, left leg up towards the sky. Exhale, step it through between the hands. Inhale, bring the right leg to meet the left, halfway lift. Exhale, fold all the way down. Roll through the knees, Roll up, vertebra by vertebra, arms come overhead, inhale, and exhale, Tadasana. So, series B here. Inhale, chair pose, so bring the arms up towards the sky, sit into your seat, knees over the toes here. Exhale, fold all the way down. Inhale, halfway lift. Exhale, step the right leg back, followed by the left leg. Again, either come onto the knees or full chaturanga, bringing the weight forward, elbows bend, inhale, upward dog or cobra, and tucking the chin, rolling back vertebra by vertebra, downward facing dog. From here, bring the left foot in, the left heel in, step the right leg between the hands, help it the rest of the way if you need to. If you get this far, just grab hold of it with your leg and help it rather than swing it through. Inhale, lift, warrior one. Hands can be apart or together, press in if they're together, press the palms together, really create force there. Inhale, exhale as you place the hands either side, unplug the back heel, step the right leg back, chaturanga or straight into downward dog option or knees, chest, chin. So shoulders come to elbow height. Inhale, brings you up into your upward dog, thighs engaged and roll back, downward facing dog. Swivel the right heel in and step that left leg all the way through 
between the hands. Inhale, brings you up into your warrior one. Again, hands can be shoulder width apart or you can place the hands, pressing them together. Exhale, as you come all the way down into your chaturanga or knees, chest, chin, upward dog or cobra, rolling back all the way into downward facing dog. Bending the knees, stepping or jumping between the hands here. Inhale, coming into your chair pose, holding your chair pose here. So knees are gonna be over or just behind the toes, looking down. You can look up or you can look straight or you can look down, depending on what your neck allows. Hands can be separated or they can be pressed together. Okay, it's a little bit harder when you press them together, but you should be feeling tension along the side body here. As you press down, sit a little lower. Good, and then inhale, come all the way up. And exhale, fold down. And just hang here for a moment, chilling out. Knees can be slightly bent, good. And straighten the legs maybe, walk on the spot, and then bend the knees, roll up vertebra by vertebra. Step the right leg out, so you have your legs parallel underneath your wrists. When you extend your arms outwards, the feet are roughly uh, underneath the wrists. Taking the hands into reverse prayer, or if that's a bit challenging for you, you can always take opposite elbows here. If you're in reverse prayer, Stay in reverse prayer or take opposite elbows. I'll demonstrate it with opposite elbows. We're going to turn the right foot out, turn the left foot in slightly. We're going to set up for pyramid pose. So one right foot is facing forward, left foot is angled in about 45 degrees. Both legs are straight here. Okay, and then from here we're going to exhale, come halfway down. Draw that right hip back and the left hip forwards as you find the stretch along that right side. Okay, so again, opening up the shoulders by grabbing hold of opposite elbows, or if your wrists allow, your shoulders allow, then always take the reverse prayer as the option. And then fold all the way down towards the thigh, trying your best to get that shoulder, um, the chest onto the thigh here. Inhale. And exhale. Pressing through that right big toe, the outer blade of that left foot. Inhale brings you up to standing. Exhale as you swivel the feet. Swivel the feet, the left foot forwards. Turn the right foot in. We're going to do the other side now. So bring in the shoulders uh, level. Thighs engaged. Inhale here. Exhale, fold in halfway to begin with. When you get halfway, draw that right hip forward, the left hip back. Inhale here, and then exhale a little bit more as you come down further, bringing the chest towards the shin. Okay, so chest is coming towards the shin, so you're coming up and out of your hips as you bring that chest towards the shin, okay? Bring in the, or you could say chin to shin even, if you wish. Okay, chin to shin, but chest maybe is more applicable. Breathing in, again, pressing through that left big toe, and then inhale, coming up. Raising the arms up to our starting position. Okay, setting up for the next pose here. So again, feet around underneath the shoulders or underneath the, the ankles. Turn the right foot out, we're setting up for Trikonasana, or triangle pose. Inhale, draw that right hand forward, the left hip back, and then rotating the torso as you bring the right hand down, the left hand up. If you want to take the traditional Ashtanga pose, it's grabbing hold of the big toe with the peace fingers. Or you can 
place the hand inside of the, the thigh or the calf muscle, draw that left shoulder back, activate the fingers in the left hand, and your wrists should be directly one over the other. Keeping the hips nice and open, inhale brings you back up. Exhale, turn the right foot in. Turn the left foot out this time. Setting up the trikonasana on the other side. So from here, again, nice arms out stretch. Reach out with the left hand. Right hip comes back. Rotating the left hand down, the right hand up. Making sure that that right hip is not falling in too much. You're still opening up at that right hip. Gaze up towards the hand if that allows or is it allowed with your neck. Otherwise, look down towards the floor or look towards the, um, the side. That's totally fine. Wrists are aligned one over the other. Right shoulder is drawing back. Shoulder blades are coming down the back body, opening up here. Engage the left thigh, engage the right thigh. Press through that left big toe and inhale. Brings you back up to our starting position here with our feet turned in. So, revolved trikonasana here. Again, you may want a block if you have a block available. Straddle your center line of your mat if you have one or your imaginary line. Left foot is pointing up the mat slightly, or in my case, down the mat. Right foot is pointing directly straight. Hips are square from here. Inhale the left hand up towards the sky. Exhale, fold halfway. Inhale, reach forwards, draw that right hip back and exhale as you place the left hand outside of the right hand. If you're happy here, stay here. If you've got more space, you can take the right hand up and draw that right hip back as you bring the left hip forward. Engage in both legs, pressing through the big toe of the front foot and the outer blade of the left foot. Rotating that right shoulder open, activating the fingers here. Good. Really twisting around and then inhale, brings you up. And then ooh, we swivel around and we do our best not to fall like I did. And then we have our right foot pointing forwards, our left foot, sorry, our left foot pointing forward, our right foot pointed at an angle. Hips are square, straddling that white, that imaginary line if you've got no line there. Inhale, right hand up, exhale, fold halfway. Inhale, reach forward, draw that left hip back, right hip forward. Bring the right hand outside of the left shin. Here you can stay, or once you've got that twist and drawing that left hip back, you can potentially raise the left hand. Okay, it's gonna be different each side, so don't worry. Uh, I have an old shoulder injury here, so this is like a really tough pose for me, opening up that left shoulder as much as possible. Draw the shoulder blades down the back body here. Maybe look towards the bottom foot or maybe look up towards the sky. Up to you, depending on what you're able to do. Inhale brings you back up. Coming into our starting position, like our starfish pose here. Turning the right foot out, left foot in. Slightly wider stance here as we take a warrior pose here. So drawing the right hip back, the left hip forwards. Arms up towards the sky, pressing the hands towards each other, activating the lats here as we press, press, press. Look up towards the hands. Knee, right knee is over the ankle here. And right hip is drawing back, left hip is drawing forwards. Pressure go through that right big toe, the left outer blade of the foot. Okay, so you want to be pressing through that left outer edge of the foot as well as through that front big toe. Inhale here. Good, and then from here, coming back into our starfish pose with uh, our hands over the side of our wrists, over our ankles even, turning the left foot out, the right foot comes in slightly, bending the left knee, sweeping the arms up, pressing the hands or the palms together here, pressing through that left big toe, engaging that left thigh, engaging the right thigh, looking up towards the hands, engaging the lats, remembering to breathe in through the nose, out through the nose. Nice, soft, relaxed breaths, although they are deep into the belly. Separating the hands, coming back to our starting position here. Turning the right foot out, 
maybe finding a bit more length here. As you come into a warrior two position, right knee over right ankle, wrists over the ankles. Engage the left thigh, press through that outer left blade of the foot. Coming into extended triangle, right forearm to thigh. Sweep the left arm up and over, activate the fingers in the left hand. Don't press down too much onto the right forearm. Open up the chest to the left side. Stay here if you wish, or if you've got space, you can bring the right hand outside of the right foot and take it to the floor. Opening up the left side of the room, opening up to the left side of your room. So try not to collapse that left shoulder, open up the left shoulder, draw the shoulder blades down the back body, engage the left thigh, engagement through that outer blade of that left foot, look up towards that forearm or even the wrist, inhale brings you back up, turning the right feet, foot in. Take a breath in and exhale. Turning the left foot out now, right foot comes in slightly, taking our warrior two position, left knee over left ankle, track it over the second big toe. From here, left forearm to the foot, to the uh, to her thigh, can't speak, right hand up and over. Keep the chest nice and open here. Again, not too much pressure going through that left forearm, almost that like you can lift it. If you're happy here, stay here. If you want a little bit more, bring the left hand down towards the floor outside of the left foot. Swivel the waist open, turn in the chest towards the right hand side. Activate the fingers, activate the arm, activate that back leg pressing through the back outer edge of that foot as well as the front big toe turning making sure that that knee is not turning in too much it's tracking over the second big toe inhale brings you all the way up hands to the waist from here maybe a bit wider with the feet inhale here exhale fold forwards and down grabbing hold of the big toes if you can Inhale, look forward, straighten the back. Exhale, elbows out to the side as you pull down, fold in towards the floor. Weight going into the front of the foot, keeping the hips in line with the legs and the ankles and not coming back too far here. Inhale and exhale. Inhale and exhale. Really pulling on the toes here. And then releasing the toes, hands to the hips. Inhale, bring yourself all the way up, maybe softening the knees as you come up to standing. Take a breath in and out. Good. And then step in towards the front of your mat here. Feet together, big toes touching, heels slightly apart to dust and pose. Engaging the thighs, engaging the glutes, relaxed shoulders down the back. Okay, from here, you're gonna, I'm going to just turn to face you now. We're going to take our knee up, right knee, or actually, if you're, well, let's stick to the right knee, so maybe you're not mirroring me right now. Bringing the hand outside of the knee. Okay, if you're happy here, stay here. If you want to grab hold of the big toe, grabbing hold of the big toe left hand to the thigh. Now you can stay here, or you can start to straighten that leg. Maybe you straighten it, maybe it stays bent, maybe you've got a strap and you can use the strap. Engage that standing leg, pressing through the big toe of the standing leg. Working your way up to keeping your, your back straight as much as possible so you're not collapsing into the leg. Doesn't matter if you get it straight or not, sometimes I have it straight, sometimes it's a little bit cold, like it is now and it doesn't want to go and then inhale bringing the knee back in exhale release into the floor taking the opposite side so in my case I'm standing on the right leg bringing the left knee in again keep hold of the knee if you want that's totally fine that's all you're doing this is just a balancing pose otherwise you can grab hold of the toe again stay here with a bent leg totally totally fine if you want you start to straighten that leg, drawing that shoulder back into its socket. As you start to push the heel away from you, 
engaging through that standing big toe, engaging through the standing thigh and glutes muscle here. Breathing in and out. Doing your best here. If you wobble, if you fall, that's fine. Just come back into it slowly, gracefully as possible. Inhale and exhale. And then releasing the knee back into the chest and the foot towards the ground. Taking a breath into Dasana. And separating the feet about hip width apart, maybe just a tad wider. Inhale here. Exhale as you fold all the way down, forward fold, grabbing hold of the big toes with the peace fingers here and drawing the chest towards the thighs, bringing the weight into the front of the foot, taking the elbows out to the side, releasing the jaw, releasing the neck, releasing the head, giving it a shake yes and no, just to relax. Inhale, come up halfway lift. And then exhale, bringing the hands underneath the foot, stepping onto the hand and bringing the toes all the way to the wrists here, pressing through onto the backs of the wrist, starting to straighten the legs as much as you can. Trying to get the weight into the front of the hands here. Inhale, and exhale, and then bending the knees, releasing the hands, and just rolling up vertebra by vertebra here, coming back to standing. Giving the shoulders a couple of rotations backwards, and then a couple of rotations forwards here. And then bringing the feet together into Tadasana Mountain Pose. Again, engaging the glutes, engaging the thighs. This is an active pose, not just a standing, chilling out kind of pose, okay? Palms facing forwards, eyes closed, as you just take a breath there. Inhale, and exhale. Okay, from here, bringing the left, so standing onto the left leg, bringing the right leg up, hands to the hips, and kicking, so kicking warrior, kicking that right leg out, activating the foot, either pointing or flexing. I prefer to actually have it in demi-point, which is where you point, and then you bring the toes towards you. Raising the thigh a little bit higher. Imagine there's a little candle underneath your heel, and it's going to burn your foot if you allow it to drop. So you've got to raise it a little bit higher, a couple of millimetres higher, holding that position. Left leg is nice and straight, or whatever your standing leg is, and then bring the foot back down. So whatever uh, leg you did, do the opposite now. So for me, I'm standing on my right leg, engaging the right thigh here, pressing through the, left big, uh, the right big toe, drawing the left knee up, and then kicking forwards, always more challenging on my left side to get it the height here. So again, demi point for me, but maybe for you it's pointing or flexing. Demi point, remember, is you're pointing with the ball of the foot. So you're activating both the front and back of the leg here as you do so. Drawing the leg up even higher. Remember that candle underneath, about to burn your heel if you drop it. Breathe in, smile, take it, enjoy it and then bring the knee in and down. Good, and just shake out the legs a little bit. That one's always a tough one for me, I have to say, as we find our way back into Tadasana or Mountain Pose. Okay, from here, separating the feet, interlacing the fingers. Inhale, draw the arms up towards the sky, and then taking a seat. So imaginary seat in your chair, you push the palms away from you, Draw the shoulders back down to your lower body as you're bringing the chest a little bit more parallel, sitting 
into that imaginary chair, almost bringing your thighs parallel, keeping the weight into the heels. Um, and so you can see your toes quite comfortably here. The knees are tracking over the middle toes as you find the gaze towards the floor, allowing the neck to remain long. Thighs may well be burning right now. Just stay with it, stay with it, stay with it. Breathe in and out. Inhale brings you back up. And then exhale, releasing the arms by the side, bringing the feet together. Taking a moment here. Inhale. And exhale. And then making your way onto the ground here. So, taking your seat and taking staff pose or dandasana. So moving the fleshy bits away from your bottom, keeping the shoulders over your hips. Activate the legs, bring the feet and the toes towards you, almost so that your heels are lifting. Hands by the side, shoulder blades down the back, gazes directly forwards as we take this dandasana or staff pose position. Thighs are nicely, strongly engaged, knocking onto them, right? Make sure that they're engaged. The heels are raising off, toes are coming towards you, the entire foot is coming towards you, and then release a little bit. Right, if you need to, bend your legs slightly on this one. Otherwise, grabbing hold of the big toes as you find a straight back. Or you can take a strap or a belt or a towel and then grab hold of that around your feet and then draw the chest towards you, um, towards the thighs as you bend the elbows, keeping the legs straight if you can, keeping the back flat until you need to round it and then you start to round through the lower back, the upper back, bringing the forehead down. Pulling on the thighs, drawing the hips back, breathing here. Good. And then inhale, brings you back up. So reverse plank here. You can take it with bent legs in a moment, or you place the hands underneath the shoulders, you draw the hips up towards the sky, the feet are coming towards the ground, the head is gazing backwards. If this is too tough, you bring your knees bent or your feet bent and you take a reverse uh, tabletop instead of the reverse bridge okay so a little bit more challenging is the reverse bridge fingers are pointing up towards the feet shoulders are nice and open neck is open hips are nice and high and you're working your feet towards going flat onto the ground okay maybe they go flat maybe they don't who knows okay again if you need to Come into the reverse tabletop position instead. That is totally, utterly fine. And then bringing the hips down towards the ground here. <sighs> Having a little breather here. Bending the knees and rolling onto your back. Vertebra by vertebra. Okay, we're gonna set up for wheel and bridge. So the first one will be bridge. So bringing the, the feet towards, uh, the heels towards the bottom. So you can almost touch and then drawing the hips up vertebra by vertebra, shuffling the shoulders underneath as you lift the hips up towards the sky, interlacing the hands underneath the hips here, opening up to the sky. Imagine you've got like a little football between your thighs as you're engaging the thighs, trying to keep that football in place. Feet are pointing directly forward so they're not flaring out from one side to the other. I know that's a bit tricky to see, but that's fine. And releasing the hands and releasing down vertebra by vertebra. Okay, option is to stay in this one for the second one, or if you wish, you can take a wheel, okay? So I'm a little bit close in the shoulders, um, but it can be easier if you've got uh, the wall behind you, if you need, or you're just gonna place the hands by the ears, draw the hips up towards the sky once more, Place the head, the crown of the head on the ground. Readjust your hands and your uh, positioning and then push the elbows straight as possible. Lifting the hips up towards the sky, engaging with the contact on the floor here. Yeah, holding that, three, two, 
one and then releasing back down to the ground good and then windscreen wiper in the feet or the knees from side to side so keeping the feet where they are but this windscreen wiper the knees from side to side good and bringing the knees in towards the chest rounding through the spine hugging yourself tightly ah And then rocking forward and backwards, tucked in until you come eventually to sitting, coming back into Dandasana, set up, but then we're just going to roll forwards into a forward fold. So here you may want to bend your uh, bend your feet, uh, your knees even, if you can't reach your feet, grabbing hold of the outside of the feet and just slowly maybe creeping um, the feet forward keeping the chest or the thighs engaged with each other. So the thighs and the chest are touching as you creep the heels forward, stretching the lower back here, rounding through the back, bringing the face towards the legs. Finding a little bit of peace, a little bit of relaxation here. Maybe you start to straighten the legs a little bit more and then release the hands, release the feet, roll back up and then eventually find your way to the mat. So rolling vertebra by vertebra. One more final hug if you want or a happy baby even. Bringing the soles of the feet to the sky, the knees towards the armpits, pulling through the outer edge of the foot and then finally releasing the feet to the corners of the mat, allow the toes to flop open, legs to be nice and long, coming out of the hip bone, arms to be nice and long, again about six inches away from the hips, palms facing up, neck nice and long, breath soften, relax. Nothing to do now. Feel free to stay as long as you want in Shavasana here. Otherwise we'll just give it a minute together. Allow any thoughts that enter your mind to just leave as quickly as they entered. If it helps, you can visualize these thoughts of clouds passing over the sky, just like you would see them passing over through like a, a sunroof or something. They come in and they go. to wiggle the fingers, wiggle the toes, rotate through the wrists and the ankles one way and then the opposite direction. Stretching your toes and your arms to the floor over your head behind you, stretching, full body stretching, maybe stretching left side or right side out, bringing the knees in towards the chest, hugging yourself tightly telling yourself something nice about yourself, even if it's you gave a, this kind of class a go for the first time ever. And then rolling over to your left or your right, taking the fetal position, hands create a bit of a pillow underneath your head. And then using your arms gently coming up to seated with your eyes closed, your gaze inwards, centered towards your third eye, the space in the center of the forehead, just above the eyebrows here. Focus your attention there, as if you're looking towards that, even though your eyelids are closed. Bring your hands into heart center, into prayer position. Perhaps offering um, a thought out to the rest of the world or your thoughts to someone that you care about. 
maybe even dedicating this practice that you've had towards them. Then bringing your prayer towards your forehead, your third eye. We ask that we have the wisdom to watch our thoughts. Lowering your prayer towards your mouth or your throat chakra, we ask that we have the restraint to watch our words, especially when dealing with other people, but also the compassion to be mindful of our own internal dialogue. And then finally, lowering our hands towards our heart centre, we ask that we have the strength and courage to do whatever is right and necessary, even when it's not the most preferred or desired path. Namaste. Thank you so much for practicing along with me today. Uh, as I said, my name is Harry Kalimnios from thoughtgym.com. If you want to follow along with me on social media, uh, I would love to see you there. The Thought Gym is where you'll find me on YouTube, Facebook, Instagram, Twitter. Plenty of videos as well on YouTube around mindset, personal development, health, well-being, resilience, uh, as well as yoga. So do check me out there uh, and head to thethoughtgym.com for a, uh, a more in-depth look into what it takes to feel superhuman with the mindset, energy and resilience that you so massively deserve. So I hope to see you on one of those platforms very soon or on the mat with me at another time. Namaste.